TV questions first, please. Sky or BBC? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, your one win for the Premier League, and it's the richest match in uh, world football. Yeah, that's what they I'm say. Nervous. Well, we're not nervous. Not yet. Maybe on the maybe on the Monday, but uh, we just never have enough preparation like we normally do. You know, prepare as good as we can. Um, we are confident. You know, we've uh, we've shown that we've done that in other games as well. We know we're going to be facing a good team again. Uh, but that's what you, if you end up in the top six, uh, they're only good teams. I've told you that before as well. But um, you know, we're going to uh, give it our best shot. We're going to work very hard. We're going to believe in ourselves again, and then hopefully we can get a good result. The sums for winning though are staggering: 170 million guaranteed if you go up. Could be 290. Yeah, yeah, it could be nothing as well, um, you know. But uh, the thing is, we don't really, really want to think about that, you know, because we're not there yet. So uh, we need to think about what we need to do now to see to win that game. So and that's what we're going to be facing. We're not going to be thinking about what it does to the club or to the city if you win. Uh, there's also a chance that you lose. So uh, so we need to prepare ourselves uh, for that game to uh, to make sure we get results and then. After the game, we can think about what it uh, what it does for the team and for the club and uh, and everything. Reading have never made it up through the playoffs. Five defeats, three in finals. Are you can change that. Well, hopefully, it is always a first. So um, uh, I didn't really well. You, you you mention it now, the record. So I didn't really know that. Not really interested in what happened in the past. Um, I'm interested in what happens now and, and where we are, what we need to do to uh, to get a result. And that's how we've been working this season. That's how we're going to be facing the game on Monday, and then uh, hopefully we'll uh, we'll change it, and hopefully we can get a result on Monday. Will the results of the match have any impact on your future here? Uh, no, I don't think so. No, it's uh, again, you know, I, I still have a contract over here. I'm happy over here. Um, I love working with this team, with these players. Um, it would be great if we can make it to the Premier League. If not, we're still in a Championship, still uh, having a good team, uh, working for a nice club. Um, of course, the ambitions there, like I've told you before, um, um, we'll see at the, at the end of the season. But uh, what it does, uh, what we can do over here with the club, what they want uh, to do with me, uh, maybe the club wants to have somebody else. You never know how it goes nowadays in football. But um, you know, I'm happy where I'm uh, at the moment. And the two games with Huddersfield so far this season, both really close. What are your memories of those? Yeah, you know the one we won uh, at home. We lost over there one 0 uh, Like you said, very close in possession as well. Both teams like to play in a similar way. Um, if you look at the plays as well, the quality of the players, um, you know, so it, it, it's going to be an interesting game again um, on the Monday, and how they are going to be setting up uh, their team uh, in what we're going to be doing to uh, to create chances or hopefully scoring goals and uh, to not and to give nothing away. You know, so it's uh, it's going to be a tight game again, I think. Yeah. Are you going to do the same kind of job on them that you did on Fulham? Well, hopefully. You know, uh, I told you I told you before that we want to win every game, and, and uh, we're going to take risks. Um, of course, you know, you want to defend well as well. Um, we're not going to change everything uh, that we've worked for the, the, this this season. Um, Fulham was the favourite, according to everybody over here. Um, you know, we've done well against them. Uh, we're in the final. Now it's a total different game again against uh, Huddersfield. They've got a good team as well, and, and you know it's back from from scratch. You know, start from zero again, and we need to again face ourselves and work very hard to get results. And have you been practicing penalties very much? Yes, uh, we keep on doing that. You know, and it's getting better and better. So I'm very confident. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in uh, pre-season, you, you said top ten would be a big ask. Yeah. So are you surprised at your, your progress this season? Well, uh, sometimes I am, yeah, you know, but uh, pleasantly surprised because, of course, when when you start a job um, up to a certain stand that you know in, in the qualities, what players you have and what they can do. But if you're working with those players and you take them out of their comfort zone, you can see that there's a lot more in them, in what we've seen and or in what I've seen on on clips or you know from videotapes before I started over here. And then you're pleasantly pleasantly surprised in, in what they can do, what they can bring to the game, and how they can improve. In, in how they can play a total different game as well. 
And you've been the manager through quite a turbulent year, I suppose, off the field, a takeover that's finally kind of progressed. Uh, you know as the figurehead of the club, therefore, what this would mean for this club to be promoted. What, what would it mean from your perspective and the players? Um, I think for the players it's, um, it, it's, it's a very, very great achievement because I think everybody wants to play in, in, at, the, at the highest level. You want to play in the Premier League over here, there's a, you know, everybody's watching the Premier League Championship of course, a lot of people as well, but Premier League of course, you know, you're know, you there, everybody wants to play at that stage, everybody can show themselves to the world even more. Um, I think as a player you want to play for big teams, there's an opportunity for the players as well if you perform, if you do well now, if you do well in the Premier League. There's maybe another step to to even the bigger teams, so I think that makes it easier as well. If you're already playing in the Premier League, so people can see you um, as a player that you can that you can do well at that level. So uh, I think it's good for them. I think for the club, it's great if you go into the Premier League because of the money is involved. You know, so it's it's good for everybody um, if you like, use it wisely as well. Um, you know, and I think for us, for the for the for the staff, it, it's very good, and not only us, the technical staff, but everybody around the club, it's great as well to to work in a club that's working or that's playing in the in the Premier League as well. And I think the attraction of playing in the Premier League, it's it's getting bigger and bigger for the crowd as well. So the crowd is is, is going to be more uh, fans, of course, in uh, in the stadium. So yeah, everything in everything, it's it's better to play in there, of course, you know. But but still, like I said before, it, it, it's it's still. Quite a long way to go because 95 minutes can can be a very long way. So and and we need to do well. So first we need to focus on what we need to do to get there. Do you tell your players to embrace the occasion or zone it out? How did you do it when you played? Well, it, it's a thing, and everybody is always talking about um, when you play finals that you need to do the same things as what you do in the league. And of course, that's uh, easily said and done because everybody knows the importance of the games, the the, the, the stakes. At the, um, at the game, and you know what's at stake, what you need to do, what you can achieve eventually, or if you lose, uh, the, what feeling you can you can have as well. And I've been there myself as well. But yeah, we try to prepare our team normal as as we always do, um, and and they, they just need to believe in themselves. They need to have confidence in the, in the team, in each other, and what they can do. We've we've done that against Fulham as well in in how we needed to play. Uh, of course, it's a special occasion, so you can think a bit about that, you know. But as soon as, as you're on the pitch, there, uh, the referee starts the, the game. You need to play your own game, and, and we try to get that into the plays that you need to need to like focus on that. Just a message to, to the fans briefly as well. They're flying in from all over the world to be here. Um, it's a, it's another big day for them, and as we mentioned earlier, they've had some bad days at Wembley, I suppose. Oh, well, you know, there's uh, like I said, you know, you want to change uh, certain things. You know, uh, we we didn't really think about that what happened in the past. You know, we don't want to focus on that because I think that's bad. Of course, sometimes you can you can take the the the, the bad moments and then try to turn it around in, into good moments. You know, but um, we focus on what we what we need to do. You know, in in, in working hard, uh, we enjoy it that we're at Wembley, that we can play in a great stadium with a lot of fans, like you said, coming from all over the world, supporting us. Everybody's already very happy that we're there in the final, but you know finals are there to be won. So if you're there, if you're playing the final, you need to give it your best shot. You need to give it everything to get a result. Yeah, can I ask a quick question about security? Uh, obviously, as a former Man United player, you've had words about the atrocities that happened this yeah. week. Reading fans being asked to get to the ground earlier for security. What's your message to the fans about the day on that front? Well, well, I think everybody knows what to do, and, and everybody knows what to expect. Especially now, in what happens, uh, what happened at Manchester, you know, and what happened uh, previous times uh, in, in in other countries as well, which is a big disappointment for everybody, especially for the families uh, involved, of course, you know. And, and it's a it's a very sad moment again that this happens, and um, because this is happening, uh, things are changing in the world. You know, you need to. Uh, well, um, Identify yourselves every time. You need to to uh, have a look in, in what you bring to to the stadium because there's more security and everything. I think that's normal. Um, so it's a good thing that the, that the fans are going to be there in time. You know, so they can help and make it make it easy for the police and for the stewards as well over there, so they can go into the ground uh, safe and well. And I think that's very important. Yeah. Thank you. Any more from TVs? No. Jack, if you want to put your chair up so it's comfortable. And then a couple of radio questions, then we'll get to your listeners. A couple of minutes. Yeah, perfect. Um, 
So yeah, we're here just a few days before the final. If you were to go back to when you joined the club almost 12 months ago, did you even fathom that we might be sat here thinking about one game away from the Premier League? No, because um, we always we always thought from game to game in, in how to approach everything. Um, throughout the season, if, if you're doing well, if, if you're in a certain position on the table, then people start th uh, talking about certain things and what might happen. But um, we never dreamt of it, to be fair. I never thought about it. Um, of course, you, you've always got these ideals as, as a manager and as a team as well that you want to go for like uh, or the highest results or the biggest results or the, or the biggest trophies. Um, of course, I said as well, what uh, your colleagues are saying as well, of course, to end up in the top 10 already would have been a great season for us. I think that's that was the right decision and right call to make at that time as well. Um, as a manager, you want to like um, improve your team, uh, hopefully the players are going to be improving as well and getting success, success in the way of playing but also creating the right atmosphere at the club and, and the right mentality within the team. I think that happened as well and if you get everything together and everybody knows in, in what they're working on and everybody is confident in, in doing that, that you can see that you can win a lot of games and can, you can make it difficult for a lot of teams and you can get into the top six as well and now in the, in the final of, uh, of the playoffs. And then, how do you keep the players calm on an occasion like this? I mean, you look around this room, this room's obviously much fuller than it has been all year long. Yeah. I mean, does it help for the players to kind of understand the magnitude of the game, or are you going to try and keep them calm and think one game at a time? Well, uh, I talk about it, you know, uh, before sessions, after uh, training sessions in certain meetings as well, but you don't want to, like, emphasise it too much. You know, it, of course, it's a very big game, an important game, but the players know what they need to do. We've got experienced players in the team who've, who've already been there, who've experienced it and, and they talk to the other players as well and what they can expect. Uh, so every, everybody's is quite calm to be fair within the team and, and you know I think they know as well that if you're going to like read everything that's been in the paper or you're going to watch everything that's that's been broadcasted on the television of course you're going to put a certain pressure on yourself as well. So I think it's a good thing to just like keep on working in, in how we've been working, you know, enjoy your things uh, or your time when you're at home. Um, don't always think about this game. Also, do other things with your family or with your wife or girlfriend or whatever, you know. And just just en enjoy it in working towards this game and, and you know and prepare well. Um, and of course, you know, on, on, on Sunday when we, when we train and we go up to London to stay in the hotel, of course, the tension is building up again. Uh, people are starting to think about it a little bit more, but. Um, Sometimes it makes it easy for us as well, you know, because you don't really need to say a lot as a manager because everybody knows what to do at that time, everybody knows what's at stake and, and what you need to do to win that game. I mean, you say you don't necessarily need to say a lot as a manager. Is there a very simple kind of message you'll give to your players just before they walk out on the pitch at Wembley? What would you be saying to them? Well, I'm not going to tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> and then finally, I mean, let's talk about you personally um, for leading Reading to Wembley in your first season here. I mean, what does that mean to you personally? Not necessarily for the club, but for you, Yapstam. Um, I always was confident in what I can do. Um, this. Well, Maybe you get a bit more confident, but um, you know, um, I've always well had to believe in myself and what I can do. You know, and and uh, it's not only up to me; it's also about my staff, the people who work with me in doing that. Because I think a manager, whatever manager, can't do it on his own. He needs the people around him with the knowledge as well that can help him out, who are working with the team as well to bring in certain things to make it to make it happen. So it's not only up to me, you know. But um, of course, I'm very happy that we achieve this and already in the first season but you know uh, achieving this in your first season um, it's going to build the expectation for next season as well so we need to be realistic as well that is uh, to do this two times in a row is going to be very it's going to be very hard but uh, let's enjoy it for now and uh, let's work towards that game on, on Monday and hopefully get a result as well yes. thanks yeah. Thank Hi, sorry, I'm um, Pa. Um, you've got new owners at the club now. Um, have you had many discussions with them ahead of the, the game? I've spoken, I've spoken to them a couple of times. Um, they're very straightforward. Um, they're, they're very hands off. They, they support me and my team in uh, what we can do, what we need to do. And basically, that's uh, that's it. Um, and what personal aspirations do you have for yourself in management and with Reading? Well, everybody knows. Uh, I've, I've spoken. Uh, Quite a few times that I want to go to uh, to the top, and, and I've played at the absolute top in the world in in my footballing career. As a manager, I want to go there as well. Hopefully, we can do that with Reading. 
um, you know, but uh, sometimes as a manager you need to move on as well, you know, but uh, like I said to one of your colleagues, I'm enjoying my time over here now and it doesn't mean that, you know, now I'm here so next season I need to be somewhere else, no, I've still got quite a few, quite a couple of years to go, uh, hopefully, so, um, you know, but eventually, uh, I like to, to work with, uh, with good players, with um, quality players and, and of course as a manager you want to show yourself or you want to see yourself working with uh, the absolute top in, in Europe or in the world as well. And final question, as, as a former Man U player obviously, do you feel personally affected by the Manchester attacks? That well not personally in terms of I wasn't there and, and nothing happened to my, my family of course you know but um, you feel very sorry with uh, the families involved in, in that you know and in it, it gets closer because you've lived there for years and years and you still know people who live over there. So uh, it, it affects you in, uh, in, in a way and, and you know, hopefully we can do something about it. But, uh, the thing is that a lot of people always say we're going to do something about it. But are we really going to do something about this? You know, because um, everybody keeps on going and we need to keep on going in, 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 in the lives that we have, of course. You know, but it doesn't make us feel uh, well, safer every time, especially if you get into big crowds. Okay. Yeah. One question, yeah. yeah. Just how important has Chris Gunter been, and how have you enjoyed working with Chris Gunter this year? Chris is a great professional. You know, uh, he's uh, he's a great player as well. He's an international. Everybody knows that. Um, he's got uh, great qualities as a as a player, uh, as a person, as a person as well. He's been very important for the team in his role that he has within the team. Uh, you know, and uh, he's one of the players. And you can't say that about a lot of players, but he gives you like 60 games a season as well. You know, and he's always fit. He's always working uh, for himself. He's always making sure he's fit. You know, he's very eager to get results and, and to win trophies as well. And you need those type of players within the club and, and within uh, your team. Okay, cameras off, please, and journalists, questions.